What is up guys, welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and today I'm taking you over my top 5 tips that I follow almost exclusively to make your pre-existing or your upcoming gaming PC build look insane. Before we jump into it, make sure to smash that like button and hit up at GeekerWatt on Instagram to see these tips in action. But let's do this. Now there are a couple of prerequisites to be had before we jump into the top 5 tips, the real meat and potatoes if you will of today's video. The first is cable management. Before we even begin, make sure your cables are tucked tidily away, uh, rooted through the appropriate rumble grommets, uh, behind the motherboard backplate. Make sure they can't be seen through holes in that motherboard plate and we're all good to go. The second thing is dust, make sure that your system's clean because otherwise, once again, we're fighting a losing battle before we've even begun. Take those fans out, give them a good wipe down, uh, same goes for your other components, just with a dry cloth or a tea towel or a kitchen towel could work really, really well. Now then let's look at tip number one, which comes in the form of power supply cables. Cheaper power supplies will often include crappier sleeving on the cables, whether that be this horrible mesh stuff or this rainbow array of rubber colours that just doesn't look good. There are a couple of ways to solve this. The first is via Silverstone's universal cable extensions. These braided cable extensions work with any power supply and go on top of your existing connectors. They make things look so, so much nicer and also give you a bit more length to each of the cables if you might need it. They do them in a range of colours and I'll link them all below for US, UK and other regions for Amazon. But James, I've not yet built my system. How can I sort of avoid this problem in the first place? Cooler Master's Masterwatt uh, 650 is one of the cheapest units I can think of that includes uh, cables that are all sleeved uh, with rubber steel but individually and all black. This makes them easier to run with a flatter profile and also makes them look far, far better. Especially in cases with tinted glass side panels, you can't actually distinguish the black cables that much anyway. Whereas a yellow or a green or a brown or a blue on a cheaper cable can really stick out and just knock off the whole aesthetic. Number two. RGB. Now, wait, 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 don't click off yet. I know exactly what you're thinking. RGB doesn't have to be tacky, it doesn't have to be expensive, and it doesn't have to be difficult to control. RGB can really take your build up a notch and make it look so much better, especially with uh, tempered glass side panels. If you can hide that RGB lighting, you get a bit of uh, light into that system and it allows you to see it better through the side panel. Now, uh, there are a few things to note with RGB and a few ways to go about it. More recent motherboard releases, uh, especially those on the slightly higher end of things, actually have RGB uh, connectors on board, meaning you can go to Amazon and buy a super cheap 50-50 RGB strip and plug it in and life's a good and it'll work straight away. But what happens if you don't have a motherboard with an RGB connector? No worries. Many cases such as Bitphoenix's Enzo, which I featured in my recent $1200 build, which you can see in the card section here, actually have RGB hubs on board, controllable uh, via a button on the front panel. Cooler Master have done the same recently with their Mastercase 500 Maker Tempered Glass Edition uh, chassis and it works really, really well. Now, what happens if you don't have any of those? Super simple, you can pick up uh, just a standard run-of-the-mill RGB control hub from Amazon or eBay for literally under $5 and use a remote. It just, I'm telling you, it will take your system up a notch. You don't have to have fancy multicolored flashing effects you can just keep it simple with a white, a blue, a red, or a green, but you have that option. In fact, 16.8 million options when it comes to RGB. Number three, colour scheme. Now, I appreciate this one is very much a note of forward planning uh, and isn't going to be applicable to everyone, but a bit of common sense is due. A black and red motherboard is not going to look good with a grey and yellow graphics card, for example. I always recommend people pick uh, a main colour, normally black, with an accent colour, such as a blue, red, green, purple, uh, white, all that sort of stuff, and then go down that route, ensuring their components fit within that colour scheme. It helps you to stay more streamlined. All white builds are more challenging to source parts for, but can also look fantastic, uh, as can all black builds with RGB accents. That way your lighting is controlling the colour uh, that your system comes across, meaning you can mix and match as your desk setup or configuration changes. Number four, proportions. Now, if you're planning on building a gaming PC build, and I've been guilty of this before, sometimes you can get carried away picking the best possible value components. All right, I want a GTX 1060, what's the cheapest one? We'll shove that in. I want a case, let's have a nice ATX tower. 
all of that sort of stuff. But the problem is then, are often cheaper graphics cards, are the smaller form factor ITX units. A big full size ATX motherboard inside an ATX case and a really small form factor graphics card just isn't going to look very good. You also might encounter some performance issues uh, with uh, inferior cooling on that graphics card as smaller ITX units often only have one fan as opposed to two or three fan on their bigger card counterparts. Now what do I mean by case features? What should you be looking out for? The first thing is features like a power supply shield. Uh, these are traditionally higher end features but are actually found on some newer cases, Thermaltakes Versa H17 uh, is actually a good example of that and really helps to hide your power supply unit because it is the ugliest part in your system any hard drives that you might have, as well as making cable management a lot easier. Just shovel your cables there and you don't have to worry about them. There is a few reasons as well why you perhaps shouldn't go on Amazon and search PC gaming cases and just buy whatever's at the top of the list with a light up fan. There's a reason me and other tech content creators don't recommend them. A case is actually so much more about aesthetics and that might sound odd for me to say in a video all about aesthetics. However, a case is also so much about the build experience. If building in a case is really unenjoyable and a pain, your system isn't going to look that great. Cheaper cases can often forget to have a cutout in the top left corner of the motherboard tray for your 8-pin CPU power connector and this can look crap having your longest cable strewn across uh, the motherboard as opposed to uh, routed properly behind the motherboard tray. In recent months, maybe years, I've also seen myself gravitating more towards cases that are more conservative and reserved in their design. If you want a really gamer looking system that looks really cool, and I don't blame you, uh, I do as well, then go for a more simple looking case and make the build look good through the actual components inside. Add lighting, buy a nice looking graphics card, get a good looking motherboard, uh, get some RGB RAM, but don't get a case that's plastic fantastic and looks great in photos, but it's going to cut you when you try to run your cables through in real life. I think that about wraps it up though for today's top five video. If you enjoyed this kind of new style of content, wanted to mix it up a bit, then make sure to subscribe, follow me on all the social channels, be social channels below. I can't even speak as per usual. And as always, we'll see you in the next Geek Your Up video.